we are done with history of anesthesia so now i will just introduce anesthesia introduction of anesthesia now guys anesthesia is basically divided into two broad division number 1 general anesthesia and number 2 regional anesthesia okay so what is general anesthesia general anesthesia when i say i am providing general anesthesia to my patient i provide five things to my patient there are five components of general anesthesia previously when anesthesia was defined it was called triad of anesthesia only three components of anesthesia but today we have defined five components of anesthesia so coming on what are the components of general anesthesia what exactly we provide under general anesthesia components components of general anesthesia number 1 loss of consciousness we always make our patient unconscious loss of consciousness is must during general anesthesia but loss of consciousness is not required in regional anesthesia right in regional anesthesia only the part which is operated is anesthetized patient is not made unconscious so first component of general anesthesia is loss of consciousness loss of consciousness okay then loss of reflex response we take away all the automatic the sympathetic ref and parasympathetic reflexes of the patient and provide a smooth plane for the surgeon to operate so loss of reflex response reflex response you know if the patient's reflex response is active then if the surgeon pull or push or any viscera or touch a nerve fiber a reflex response will happen patient may go into bradycardia hypotension hypertension anything can happen so we cannot let in that condition surgeon to operate we'll have to manage that condition otherwise it may lead to cardiac arrest so what we do under general anesthesia we remove those reflex response so that a smooth surgical anesthesia plane is available for the patient for the surgeon to operate third is amnesia we provide a amnesia to the patient so what happened the time period for which the patient is under anesthesia patient does not remember anything of that time period so patient because you know a uh, surgery etc is a very stressful situation so we provide a let's say anterograde amnesia to the patient so patient does not remember anything happened during that particular time period so we provide amnesia fourth is muscle relaxation we relax all the muscle of the body by either paralyzing or by using agents which decreases the tone depending upon the surgical demand if the surgery requires a paralysis like abdominal surgery etc we give neuromuscular blocker and paralyze our patient but if surgery does not require paralysis number of times we don't paralyze the patient little bit relaxation can be achieved by other anesthetic agents as well fifth analgesia you know the drugs which we use for producing loss of consciousness is not necessarily the drug providing analgesia we all know path of consciousness and path of pain are different so a drug may act on path of consciousness but may not act on path of pain so 
patient may become unconscious but may feel the pain if i will not give a analgesic agent to the patient so we have to give drugs which also provides analgesia so these are the five component of general anesthesia loss of consciousness loss of reflex response amnesia relaxation and analgesia you know previously when anesthesia was not so well defined then it was called triad of anesthesia the historical aspect i am telling today we have something called five things five features of general anesthesia but previously triad of anesthesia was described triad of anesthesia triad of anesthesia in which we had narcosis relaxation and analgesia okay number of time students say ma'am shouldn't it be unconsciousness relaxation and analgesia guys actually what was there in the triad cannot be modified what it should be or what it shouldn't be it is a historical thing and whatever it was described we just need to remember triad like that so sometimes they ask in exam what is the what is what constitutes triad of anesthesia then you have to answer narcosis relaxation and analgesia right but today we provide five things under anesthesia we call it pentad of anesthesia that is loss of consciousness loss of reflex response amnesia relaxation and analgesia and remember guys it is not one drug which is used to provide all these five components we are using multiple drug for the different component of general anesthesia and as i described this in history of anesthesia that lundy lundy came up with the concept of balanced anesthesia and what ba is balanced anesthesia what we are practicing today also right so when i am using multiple drug for providing all these five component of anesthesia we call it balanced anesthesia and we are indeed using multiple drugs so we are providing today what is called balanced anesthesia which was described by lundy as i have already written in history of anesthesia what is balanced anesthesia multiple drug given in a titrated way for producing different component of general anesthesia multiple drug given in a titrated way for producing different component of general anesthesia is something called balanced anesthesia so what are the multiple drug i am using for these five components loss of consciousness what are the drugs i am using to produce unconsciousness in the patient we will discuss further in the course of the lectures inhalational anesthetic agent and intravenous anesthetic agent these are the drugs which were which we are using to produce unconsciousness so for loss of consciousness i am giving my patient inhalational or intra venous anesthetic agent okay inhalational or intravenous anesthetic agent and remember all the drugs which produces loss of consciousness also produces loss of reflex response and amnesia so these three components are provided of general anesthesia are provided by inhalational and intravenous anesthetic agents loss of consciousness loss of reflex response and amnesia okay muscle relaxation muscle relaxation to produce a muscle relaxation we are using neuromuscular blocker which causes paralysis and because of the paralysis we get a very good muscle relaxation so for muscle relaxation we are using neuro muscular blockers remember guys if i am giving neuromuscular blocker we always have to ventilate the patient from outside because apart from other muscles it will also paralyze the respiratory muscle 
and so patient will not be able to breathe. So, we have to ventilate the patient from outside. Remember, neuromuscular blockers, which all the drugs of neuromuscular blockers we will discuss in the chapter, neuromuscular blocker, they never produce loss of consciousness. They only produces muscle paralysis and as a result of muscle paralysis, we get a muscle relaxation. So, they are only providing one component. Okay. Now, remember for analgesia, we are using our best analgesic agents. We are giving opioids. So, we are using opioids. We can use other analgesic agents also. So, for analgesia, we are using opioids. So, we are using inhalational or IV anesthetic agent. We are using neuromuscular blocker. We are giving opioids for analgesia. We are using multiple drug in a titrated way. For different component of general anesthesia, we are producing something called balanced anesthesia. Got my point? Okay. Now, how do I give general anesthesia? What are the steps of general anesthesia? What is the conduit of general anesthesia? Steps. Steps of general anesthesia. Okay. So, whenever I take a patient for general anesthesia, we, I will not go into pre-anesthetic evaluation. I will discuss pre-anesthetic evaluation in my next chapter or next lecture. Let us assume I have evaluated a patient. Patient is fit for surgery or optimized for surgery and I am taking this optimized or fit patient for surgery. How do I take it? I take the patient inside operating room. Whenever the patient enters the operating room, the first thing we do, we attach some mandatory monitors. So, first thing we do, attach monitors. There are few mandatory monitors which we need to attach to every patient. We need to attach ECG to every patient. We need to attach pulse oximetry. We need to attach right, our patient temperature probe. We need to attach a BP cuff for measuring non-invasive for non-invasive blood pressure monitoring. So, we attach a blood pressure cuff for measuring NIBP that is non-invasive blood pressure monitoring. And we also uh, after maybe prior or after intubation we can attach capnography. Capnography. All these monitor we will discuss in detail in the chapter monitoring. Okay. So, I attach all the monitors. These are mandatory monitors. Depending upon the requirement of patient, if some additional monitor need to be attached, we attach that additional monitor also. After attaching the monitor, the next important thing we do, we secure our IV line. We secure our IV line. So, securement of intravenous cannula. Securement of intravenous cannula. Secure our IV line. Okay. After securing IV line, through that IV line, I inject some drug, right? I have whatever drug I have to inject, I have to inject through that IV line. So, after securement of this IV line, I inject some drug and my conscious patient who is lying on the OT table becomes unconscious. And this is the first important step of anesthesia. We call it induction, induction. Okay, we call it induction. So, what is induction? What is induction? Induction is loss of consciousness. Loss of consciousness. So, patient has been made unconscious. That is conscious to unconscious. Right? So, patient has been made unconscious. Loss of consciousness. This is called induction. And how did I did just now? I did it with intravenous anesthetic agent. I gave intravenous anesthetic agent. Okay. I give intravenous anesthetic agent. 
no i don't want to give intravenous anesthetic agent or my patient doesn't have a cannula and until and unless i make him unconscious is not allowing me to put a cannula but i have to induce then we can go for inhalational anesthetic agent through the mask placed on patient's nose and mouth we can give some inhalational anesthetic agent through anesthesia machine from anesthesia machine that inhalational anesthetic agent will enter the circuit and from circuit it will enter the mask anesthesia face mask patient will inhale it will go into the systemic circulation through uh, from alveoli it will be absorbed in blood and through blood it will reach the systemic circulation and again it can make the patient unconscious okay so this is not a intravenous mode of induction this is inhalational mode of induction so second way of induction is inhalational so okay, i can go for inhalational anesthetic agent so these are the two way by which we can induce a patient once the patient becomes unconscious now the next step of anesthesia would be to maintain this unconsciousness right but to maintain this unconsciousness before i have to secure an airway right so that continuously i give some anesthetic agent gas other important gases like oxygen etc to the patient throughout my course of anesthesia so what we do we give our patient after induction we put a mask and we ventilate our patient we do a after induction i give i do a mask ventilation mask ventilation mask ventilation right and i give iv neuromuscular blocker i do a bag and mask ventilation bag and mask ventilation i put a anesthesia face mask and through bag anesthesia bag i uh, do give a 100% oxygen to my patient i do a bag and mask ventilation because patient has become unconscious and then i give iv intravenous neuro muscular blocker and patient becomes paralyzed once the patient becomes paralyzed i do a laryngoscopy and intubate laryngoscopy and intubation okay i put a endotracheal tube or any other airway i want to put i will discuss this in airway i can put endotracheal tube i can put a laryngeal mask airway but i secure the airway okay after securing the airway i attach the airway to the circuit which is attached to the machine and continuously from the machine the gases i want to give to my patient will go right or in which i can give inhalational anesthetic agent for the maintenance of anesthesia right or i can simply give oxygen and nitrous oxide from machine and use iv anesthetic agent in a continuous infusion for maintenance of anesthesia right so the next important step after induction after induction maintenance of anesthesia all these things i did because i had to maintain anesthesia so maintenance of anesthesia maintenance how can i maintain anesthesia either by continuous inhalational anesthetic agent or by continuous iv anesthetic agent continuous iv intravenous anesthetic agent got it so same way i induce in the same way i can maintain induction can be done by inhalational or intravenous maintenance can be done by inhalational or intravenous okay guys so for induction i can use inhalational for maintenance i can use inhalational for induction i can use intravenous for maintenance i can use intravenous when i am using intravenous both for induction and maintenance then we give it a special name we call it tiva tiva which is total intravenous anesthesia total intra 
venous anesthesia. What do I mean by TIVA? For induction, intravenous anesthetic agent has been used. For maintenance, intravenous anesthetic agent has been used. So, TIVA I will discuss when I will discuss with you IV anesthetic agent. I will go on comparing inhalational and IV anesthetic agent when I will discuss these two topics. I will go on sharing with you the important points which the points in which intravenous anesthetic agent is superior to inhalational anesthetic agent. So, those would be the advantages of TIVA and there would be some problem with TIVA which also I will tell you. So, this TIVA I will discuss in IV anesthetic agent. I just now told you only what is TIVA total intravenous anesthesia. Okay. So, I induced my patient, I intubated my patient after giving neuromuscular blocker and now I am maintaining anesthesia. As long as surgery go on, I go on maintaining anesthesia and once the surgery is finished, I wake up my patient. Third is reversal of anesthesia, reversal of anesthesia. How do I reverse? Guys, I had written continuous inhalational, continuous intravenous. We simply stop the flow, uh, the uh, inhalational anesthetic agent or simply stop the infusion of intravenous anesthetic agent, okay? And reversal can happen. And against some particular drugs, we have uh, some reversal agent which we can use. We have, let us say, so against neuromus some neuromuscular blocker, we have some reversal agent which we can use. So, we give those reversal agent, right? So, reversal of anesthesia means from unconsciousness, I bring my patient back to consciousness. For inhalational and intravenous, we simply stop them. And against some drugs, we have leisure of having reversal agent. We can use those reversal agent also. So, reversal of anesthesia. So, guys, general anesthesia basically, basically comprises of three component that is induction, maintenance and reversal, right? Five component, three basic steps, induction, maintenance and reversal of general anesthesia. A five minute GA, five hour GA, we have to do, do these three steps, okay? So, the, this is about our general anesthesia. Different topics of general anesthesia, I will discuss one after another in different chapters. Now, coming on, the regional anesthesia. What is regional anesthesia? In general anesthesia, I produce something called loss of consciousness. We do not do it in regional anesthesia. We do not paralyze our patient in regional anesthesia. What do we do? Guys, in there are varied way of giving regional anesthesia. But in every regional anesthesia, we do the same thing. We put the drug near the nerve fiber which we want to block. That is, let us say I have to get my right upper limb operated. To get this right upper limb operated, I plan to give right brachial plexus block. So, what I do? I put local anesthetic near the brachial plexus and block this brachial plexus. Block this brachial plexus and this limb is anesthetized. But, the, but I am conscious, reflexes are intact, I am breathing on my own, maybe little sedated but I am conscious. So, remember regional anesthesia we only anesthetize the nerve fiber we want to anesthetize, right? For blocking the transmission of motor sensory and autonomic transmission of that particular area where the particular surgery is being taken place, right? So, what is regional anesthesia, right? So, regional anesthesia, right, is given by, is done by local anesthetic. Local anesthetic deposited locally, never intravenously, near the nerve fiber we want to block. Near the nerve fiber, the drug blocks the autonomic 
sensory and motor outflow motor outflow right of the nerve fiber and the area supplied by that nerve fiber gets anesthetized so area supplied by that nerve fiber gets anesthetized so basically regional anesthesia is divided into two broad division central neuraxial blockade and peripheral nerve blocks peripheral nerve block blocks okay so regional anesthesia is basically divided into central neuraxial blockade and peripheral nerve block okay what is central neuraxial blockade central neuraxial blockade this is the spinal cord from spinal cord spinal nerves comes out if i block the spinal nerve right either by spinal anesthesia or epidural we call it central neuraxial blockade so in central neuraxial blockade we have spinal anesthesia and epidural anesthesia okay so we'll talk about central neuraxial blockade in the chapter central neuraxial blockade and apart from this the second if i want to block brachial plexus or sciatic nerve or uh, uh, let's say any other nerve right we deposit the drug near that nerve then it comes under peripheral nerve block so if i want to block femoral nerve i put the drug near femoral nerve sciatic nerve i put the drug near sciatic nerve brachial plexus i put the drug near brachial plexus so we go for peripheral nerve blocks second is peripheral nerve blocks okay so basically regional anesthesia is divided into central neuraxial blockade peripheral nerve blocks like brachial plexus block femoral nerve block sciatic block etc etc sciatic nerve block lot of different types of peripheral nerve blocks etc so this is basically regional anesthesia okay so i talked about general anesthesia components of general anesthesia how do i give general anesthesia and i talked about regional anesthesia what are the different types of regional anesthesia okay and all the things which i have talked about in different chapters the drugs the equipments etc related to these things we will go on discussing okay this was just introduction of anesthesia okay thank you